In this session, we're going to model a meadow with a random distribution of grasses in Grasshopper using Thea Render for Rhino. Our result will look like this in Thea Darkroom. Our scene in Rhino is going to have blocks referencing XFrog plants that we can render using the Thea renderer. So to set this up, let's start a new scene in Rhino. Small objects feed. And let's start by importing some Thea models. We've installed these with Thea render tools install library. In this case, I've installed XFrog libraries for Thea. Import model. That's right. Import model. XFrog oats. Um, you can pick some other grasses. I'm going to pick oats one through four. So I'll pick it. Oats one, import proxy as bounding box. I'm going to place it at the origin, zero comma zero comma zero. Escape and place the next one. Xfrog oats, oats2, import proxy, it's bounding box, add the origin again. And I'm going to place oats4 as well. Oats 4 has some seeds, seed heads on it. That'd be a nice variety. So four different ages of plants, different levels of maturity, giving us some variety. I'm going to hit render in the Thea toolbar to start to preview that. Our plants are all clustered together, which is actually, in general, what we want for this scene. We want highly clustered grasses. Let's do some render settings to set our scene up before we begin. I'm going to go to the Thea render sidebar, environment. I'm going to turn on soft shadow and uniform illumination. Then I'm going to turn on the sun. Set the time somewhere around 5, and I'll set this for here. Then I'm going to turn off the ground plane in case I want to easily see my alpha channels when I render without having to hide the ground plane. Um, so we're ready. We've got our reference objects in the scene. We're ready to set up the scene in Grasshopper. I'm going to start a new document and I'm using the Elefront plugin to reference these blocks. In params, I'm going to use the extended geometry parameter to reference the block. When I right click on this, I can go set one geometry and I can pick one of the extra grasses. I could also right click and set multiple and pick all of the grasses. I'll do that later. We'll have to add a few more steps. I'm going to go ahead and set up the basic scene first. What we will use to create the meadow is a move to point command that's going to move this geometry to a random region of points. So I'm going to start by connecting extended geometry to the move to point geometry. For point A, that's going to be the origin where this reference object is. I'm going to place a panel. I'll label it origin. And I'm going to type in the coordinates 0, 0, 0. We could also place a construct point um, command here instead. Point B is going to come from a random population. I'm going to use populate geometry. 
rather than populate 2D because I want to put this in a circular region. So I'll plug population into point B. And I need the geometry and the count for this. The geometry is going to come from a circle. I'll start by creating a radius for this. So I'm going to place a number slider. I'll make it an integer. I'll label it radius. I'm going to set the uh, max to say 10 and my starting value to 5. Now, if we go ahead and plug circle into geometry, you'll see that our grasses are just going around the edge of the circle. That's because we need to make this a surface. So I'm going to use boundary surface to turn my circle into an area, into a region. Plug that into geometry, and now you'll see I have the default number, 100 grasses scattered across my region. Next thing I'll do is set the number, the count. So I'm going to make another number slider. I'm going to set the max here to maybe um, 5,000. And I'm going to set my initial value to say 2,000. I'll place a relay to help me keep this neat. And before we look at the plants, I want to make my ground plane. So what I'm going to do to make Earth with some thickness is I'm going to extrude this boundary surface. But before I do that, I want to scale it a little bit. Right now, the plants are coming right to the edge of it. So I want to make it a little bit bigger. I'm going to place a scale component and connect surface to geometry. My center of scaling can stay at the origin by default, and the factor, I'll just place a panel for this. I'm going to make it a value something like 1.0, let's say, a little bit wider and then I can extrude this. I'll connect geometry to base. The direction I want to extrude it down so I'm going to add a unit z vector. And plug that in as direction. Well right now it's going up one unit. I want it to go down so I'm going to add another number slider. I'm going to label this something like thickness. I'm going to keep this integer, uh, floating point, two digits, and add to the minimum minus one. I'm going to set the starting value as minus 0 0.25 and connect that to my z factor. I have a good thickness to this, and I'm actually going to go ahead and bake this into my scene for rendering. So from Elefront, I'm going to use Bake Objects, and I'm going to put the extrusion in as the geometry. I can use the Activate button on this to bake it into my scene. First, however, I want to make some attributes. I want to give this a layer. So I'm going to go define object attributes, replace this and plug it in to attributes here. And 
and I'm going to add a panel. For the layer name. I'm going to call this ground, make a ground layer, and plug it in here. Now when I hit activate, it's going to bake it into my scene on the ground layer. If I select my geometry, I can go ahead and set the ground plane up for I'm going to go to Properties, Texture Mapping, and make this box mapping. And I may adjust the size. Now I need to set a material, so I'm going to open up via Render Content, Online, Repository, Ground. I'm going to pick Roots and Dirt, and make sure you download it first. And I'm going to assign it by layer, so to my ground layer right here as the material. can check this by rendering it. We see a tiling pattern, but that'll be obscured by the thousands of grass that are going to grow across this. Back in Grasshopper, we're ready to start distributing our grasses. So right now we have 2,000 grasses randomly distributed, but all the same size and rotation. So we're going to fix that. We're going to start rotating and scaling these. So I'm going to add a scale and a rotate command. I'm going to plug the move geometry in as the scale geometry. I'm going to plug scale geometry into rotate geometry. And then I'm going to, I'm going to add the center of scaling from either population or move to point vector, like so so that it scales around the center of each point. And for a scaling factor, I'm going to add another panel um, going into a random component. I'm going to make a range with this panel from 0.5 to one and plug that in as my range. That will be my scale factor here. And I'll copy this random component to plug into angle here. For the angle, I'm going to set it to degrees and I'm going to make this panel will go from 0 to 360 for my range. And I'll plug that into angle. Uh, we need a number for both of the scaling and the rotation. Um, how many times do we do it? Right now we're only doing it once. I want to do it obviously 2,000 times, so I'll take it from my count variable here. And I'll probably go ahead and hide these wires. And now we can see our randomly scaled and rotated grasses. So we can go ahead and preview this in just a second by baking this. So I'll copy the other bake command and plug it in up here. I'll change the layer name to plants. And to bake this, I'll just hit activate. my 
mass will be in the scene. I can go ahead and render them, preview how they'll look. So let's make our scene a little bit richer. Right now, we only have one grass. I'm going to go ahead and delete the plants layer so that we can use multiple different <clears throat> grass models for this. We have four that are prepared. So I'm going to go ahead and clear the extended geometry that's referencing just one. I'm going to right click, set multiple extended geometries, select all four. So right now, I'm passing all four into the move to point command. And it's using the first four, one, two, three, four models, and then all of the rest, my some thousands of uh, move commands are all with oats four. So what I need to do is divide the input geometry list into chunks and the populate geometry point cloud into chunks. So I want four chunks representing the four plants, and I want four chunks of 500 points for each. And as I do that, I will also want to flatten the output here to geometry of scaling and center of scaling. So what I'll do is I'm going to add divide list commands twice. Divide list. I'm going to place one here, and I'm going to place another after populate geometry. So for extended geometry, I'm going to plug that into divide list. I'm going to plug chunk into move to point. Now, Right now there's only one chunk for four inputs, so I need a number of chunks. I'm going to use list length. To find the number of extended geometries here. I've got length four, I'll plug that in as my number here. So I have four chunks coming out. I want to do something similar here with populate geometry. I'm going to plug the population in as the list. And the number will also come out of list length here, four, four list. I'll go ahead and hide that wire. And I'm going to plug this chunk in as my point B. So I have four chunks of 500 coming out. I've got four plants coming in as the input geometry, and the B list is four list of 500. So into I have plants moving to 500 different uh, points apiece. And then I'm scaling all of those that are flattened together and rotating them all. Now I'm ready to bake the plants again. I'll hit activate to bake. I can hide everything here. And I may want to go ahead and, for example, label the group. Now, I can set up my scene up for rendering with these plants now. I'll go ahead and render it. It's looking better. What I may want to do is add some field of depth. So in the Thea sidebar, I'm going to go to camera. First of all, for darkroom, I'm going to sync the viewport. For field of depth, I'm going to set this to sharpness and turn off autofocus 
and I need to find the right focal distance. It's probably somewhere around three or four. I'll try three and start the rendering. I need to give it a little while to resolve. What I'm looking for is a crisp foreground and a blurry background on my plant. Probably the middle of my scene is going to be still quite blurry, so I probably may want to change this to 3.5, unless I want this extreme focus on the foreground. So let's say I make this 3.5, can test it again, and then our final step would be to go to Thea Darkroom. And here in Darkroom, I'll set the renderer and I'll go to channels. I probably want to enable an alpha channel so I can Photoshop this. We want ambient occlusion, definitely denoising and global illumination. In display settings, I may, I'll need to have a, have already done a rendering first in Darkroom to use these well, but the, the settings I may want are filmic, which is going to make this darker. So in response, I'll adjust the ISO to something like 170, 180, up to 200. I may also increase the brightness. Adjust your settings until you like the scene and um, make your final rendering and hit start rendering. When you're done, when it finishes, save the image, PNG for transparent background, JPEG for more compressed.